All right, I've cut a piece of bus wire. I just measured it out to make sure it was wide enough or long enough for my tavern wire here. And with this short bus wire, I mean, it's hard to sometimes have it to lay as flat as you want it to so you can actually put the solder on it. So what I do is just bend it inward some, not too much, but so it's laying more towards the pegboard instead of folding up like this. So it's just, just bend it in just a little bit and it just helps it to lay down so you can solder it together a lot easier. Alright, and just straighten out the tapping wire just like we did at the other end. And just straighten up the bus wire a little bit more. And then I'm just going to take some solder, take my solder and iron. And if you're not really experienced with soldering, which you should be by now if you did the solar cells, but it just comes with time. But I mean, I'm not even an expert with it yet, but as long as you're getting the solder onto the bus wire and tab wire, and it's giving it a nice bond to it, you'll be all right. It's just basically knowing what part of the solder iron you can usually get a quick amount of heat from to activate the solder. And then I'm probably just going to take some more solder here. I just like to have it nice and flat, as flat as I can. Not too bulky, but all right, there we go. And I'm just gonna trim off the access tablet wire. We'll be done with this positive connection here. So again, just take some war pliers or some scissors, either or whatever you use to cut the wire for the tape wire the first. And I'm probably going to take up these spaces so I can get a little bit closer to the access tape wire. You don't have to do this, but I mean, why not? Just make it look a little nicer. That's good enough there. And just put my spacers back here. Probably at this point don't need it if the silicone on the back is dry, but I'm just keeping it here just in case. And again, you can put some silicone or some type of glue or some type of material just to help it bond to the pegboard, but you don't have to. I mean, it'd be all right if it's, it's just up like that. But again, it'll, it'll just look a little nicer, look a little bit more professional if you 
glue it down or something, just straighten it out. So there you have it. Uh, just again, we're just gonna do the same thing when we get the third column over here that we did to the other end. And again, what we're doing are we're going a series right now, and that's why I didn't connect this to this like we did at the top there. It's basically, our positive is following this first column here, and it's leading to our negative of this one string here. And then we're connecting that to the second column over here. And this is this current, and the voltage is coming back down this string for our second column. This string is going to connect to our third string or our third column over here, and it's going to run back up here. And I'm going to have a, just as I did with this positive connection down here. I'm going to have a negative connection all the way up here. And I'm just giving you some uh, an idea of what I'm going to do eventually. And that wire there is just going to run probably alongside this edge of the plywood. And I might use some type of material to just hide the actual wire, but just to make it look a little neater. And this is going to come back here to our hose. And that'll be the basic idea of hooking up the internal part of the whole solar panel before we add the pixel glass and everything like that. And again, what I do at the end, usually before I move on to an, another string of solar cells is I hook up my digital multimeter just to make sure I'm getting the right voltage, especially when I just added this bus wire here. And since I added that, I can just touch the bus wire with my positive connection and I just have my negative connection for my multimeter here and as you can see I'm getting about 10.3 volts and it's pretty close I should out of this two columns of solar cells I should get 12 volts actually but again I am indoors so and it's not really that much sunlight coming through the window here so it's pretty close to 12 so I, Based on that, I can tell that I'm getting enough, or I can tell that they're hooked up correctly. As usually, just one string here is six volts. That's what I should get out of one string of solar cells. And this next column just adds 12. Six plus six, 12. So, again, I shouldn't even get 10 if this string here wasn't hooked up correctly. This second column of solar cells. So that's just something you can keep in mind when you're trying to do the whole calculations of the whole solar cells when you do use your multimeter. Alright so as you can see I've actually finished hooking all the uh, strings of solar cells up and what I have on top of it is my pixel glass. It's not actually screwed in or glued down yet but just gave me an interesting idea of how it's going to look when I actually do actually start to hook it to the frame of the solar panel and I got this pixel glass is what it is I got it from Home Depot they actually had uh, the perfect size which was a 2x4 and since our base of our whole panel is a 2x4 I mean it, I could just go ahead and use it without having to cut it or anything but you should be able to find it at most home improvement stores. I know Lowe's didn't have the exact size, so Home Depot was the next store that I could actually go to to try to find out. Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.